so I've had a few requests um, on Facebook and on here a few times. A lot of you are asking how I do my engine base or how I keep my engine base so nice. Well, there's a factoring behind that. Just a keen eye of detail, I guess. I mean, heck, I got a Mopar battery. Went on eBay and got an early Mopar filter. That's actually from the 90s. Um, radiator decals. I got to get the one off of eBay down. I made it myself because I was going to a car show and I didn't have it. So it's kind of freaking me out. Um, if you guys really want to do an engine bay correctly, without taking the motor out, you're going to need paintbrushes, um, spray paint, and just a lot of time and patience, to be honest with you. I mean, what you see here did not happen overnight. If you saw this engine the first day I got this car, valve cover was completely yellowed and nasty. In fact, this ain't the original valve cover. This is actually off of a 1990 Turbo Shadow. Why? Because of one-piece gasket. The older valve covers took a two-piece gasket. We still used stupid rubber ends and an RTV up front. Well, I wasn't going to have any of that crap because it's just messy. And then you got to redo the whole thing again. It just wasn't worth it. So, I upgraded. Can't even tell the difference. But yeah, like the engine block here. Um, that's fair. That's all spray paint. The only the, It has its original paint from the factory still behind the... Uh, and the distributor cap. I kept that because I thought it was cool. You could still see the black that they were. But the cylinder head is uh, painted in some spots. It's all touched up. Same with the airbox. Airbox has been painted because I wanted it to match the valve cover. Throttle body has been painted. AC compressor has been painted. It's actually a stupid O'Reilly reman that likes to lock up on hot days every now and then. That would be going bye bye for a $400 Chrysler unit. Sadly. Alternator, I took the alternator off, cleaned that up, and painted that. The reason why I have to paint all this stuff is because these cars up north, they get so corroded with aluminum crap, it's not even funny. It's just, it's just unbearable. So, that's why I paint everything. But, it looks exactly the way it came from the factory. It, valve cover was powder coated at one time, but I started polishing it, and I lost the silver on it. So, it turned gray, and it looked like crap. I'm like, well... I might just go back to the original silver that these cars were. And, sure enough, it looks awesome. But, every about once a week in the summertime, I clean the motors off, wash them, do what I need to do to keep them nice. I mean, my buddy's got a laser I did, black valve cover, nice engine bay when it was done. But he drives it so much and doesn't wash it, it looks like garbage now. It takes time and dedication, to be honest with you all. Time and dedication. I I don't do this for fun. I do it for just the pride and joy and preservation. Well, I do it for fun too, I guess. But uh, I guess while I'm under the hood, I'll show you some of the mods this car actually has. We'll start up front by the radiator. It's got an 89 uh, TC Maserati cooling fan. You probably ask yourself why. Well, the original fibrillated cooling fan died on me. It started making noise. It just didn't come on one day. I caught it. So off to the junkyard I went and grabbed one on a Maserati car. Secondly, you'll notice that the distributor cap is fatter. That's because this is a 1986 uh, distributor cap and rotor all together. Running... A stage 2 Mopar Performance computer. Now, funny thing was, my stage 1 died, which was 1985 model. It completely died out. We were coming home, and I couldn't get the thing to start, so I had to tow the car home. I had no choice. I tried everything. That logic module failed. And uh, the stock one just didn't cut it for me. I it lost a lot of power. So I threw in the stage 2, which... I didn't. I thought it was for an 85. Well, it turns out it was an 86. So easy, easy peasy. Since 85 and 86 share the same wiring, pretty much, except for the distributor, you can run 86 electronics in 85 cars. So that's that. 
more on the business end over here on our vacuum harness. That little guy is our Granger valve. Uh, manual boost control. It's currently set to around uh, 12 pounds. That's about the safe level you can run on a stock T1 non-intercooled car. You can run 14, but you can detonate, which I did once, and you have to let up on it, otherwise you're going to melt the piston. So we just set it back to 12 and we're good there. Good fuel, I found out, is a little B VP, VP racing fuel. 110 octane, blended with 91 unleaded. So there's a little bit of lead in it, but doesn't hurt it at all. On to our next thing. My vacuum harness. So two main things. There's for the boost gauge and uh, going to do map sensor. I deleted the EGR valve or blocked it off actually so it doesn't have any EGR on it either. So who in the heck needs that? Also I advanced the uh, uh, camshaft one two forward it gives it better power down low which a New Yorker being heavier needs I might go back to running it straight up I don't have the side on that but for now um, I noticed it runs really awesome and gets about 28 miles to the gallon considering how quick it actually is notice I said quick not fast it will leave a stoplight and smoke the tires actually very well oh uh, Oh, camshaft. I've got the camshaft on. It's a roller cam out of uh, out of the same Maserati car, actually. The reason I switched to roller cam is it's quieter and it produces a smoother idle. Sure, I lost some duration up on top, but I wasn't too concerned about that. I mean, it's a New Yorker. It won't be going very fast. But, however, I'll be getting another one here shortly, and that's going to be a T2 swap car. So stay tuned for that. Yep, park for winter. Can't really go anywhere. Yeah, it sucks. <laughs>